Hi everybody. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the topic of precipitation reactions. These are double replacement reactions which take place in an aqueous environment producing a solid compound which is going to precipitate. We're actually going to see it sink into the bottom of the test tube in the video of the lab. Um, we're going to discuss these reactions in terms of what's happening actually at the particle level which causes the precipitate to form. We're also going to look at the topic of how do we write a net ionic equation. So let's take a look at this type of reaction. We're going to add in some iron 3 chloride, that's FeCl3. This is an aqueous solution, so the compound is dissolved in water. You can see it has kind of a brown-orange color. Next, we're going to be adding our other reactant. We're going to add one molar sodium hydroxide. So we'll just add that drop by drop, and you can see forming right up here a precipitate. Uh, this dark brown color, this is iron 3 hydroxide forming. You can actually start to see some of it sinking down into the tube. We can see chunks of it falling here. That's where the term precipitate actually comes from. Now what we want to do in the video next is to take a look at what's occurring at the particle level which causes a precipitate to form. So initially in the test tube we had aqueous iron 3 chloride, FeCl3. Those ions are actually not together, they're, they're pulled apart by the dissolving properties of water. The dropper bottle that's had sodium hydroxide was also an aqueous solution. Now here, this is the test tube when we mix the two different reactants together. The iron ions the hydroxide ions are going to stick together so strongly that water can't pull them apart. We're actually going to see them sink down in the tube. So that is the formation of the precipitate. And let's pause here for a quick second on the video. The other ions which are in this test tube now include um, we've got chloride ions, those are the purple. We also have sodium ions, those are the black ones. Those are going to stay dissolved. So they might bump into each other, they might stick together momentarily, but then the dissolving abilities of water will pull them back apart. Let's begin playback again on the video and continue this process. So our precipitated compound is the iron 3 hydroxide. Please note we need to balance the positive plus 3 charge of the iron with the minus 1 charge of the hydroxide. Our other uh, product, sorry, is the NaCl. Next in the video we want to take a look at the topic of how is it that we describe what we just saw with a net ionic equation. This is how we write this down on paper. So what we're going to do first, our first step, is to record all of the ions pulled apart from each other. This is again because they're pulled apart when they're dissolved in the water. So the iron was not bonded to the chloride ions, they were pulled apart. Same with the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions, the two tubes that we saw on the left side of the screen. Here, this would represent what we saw on the far right tube, where the iron ions and hydroxide ions clumped together and stayed together. The sodium ions and chloride ions wound up staying apart from each other. We identify these as spectator ions. It means that they're just there observing or watching the precipitate form. They're not actually involved in the actual formation of precipitate because the precipitate included just iron and the hydroxide ions. Now I'm going to rewrite my initial equation just with the ions and compounds which are participating in the process of forming that precipitate. So the iron ion plus hydroxide ion forming the iron 3 hydroxide precipitate. I'll balance charges and number of particles by adding the coefficient 3 right here. Just a few notes, some reminders. We use the symbol AQ to let us know that we have a compound which is dissolved in water. That means that the ions have been pulled apart by the dissolving properties uh, or, or abilities of water. S is for the solid precipitate. We also want to remember um, important information about the compounds that we put a line through or the ions that we put a line through. These are the spectator ions. They're not actually involved in the process of forming the precipitate. The chloride ion, the sodium ion, that was not the solid material we saw sinking in the test tube. Those ions were present in the tube, but they weren't forming that precipitate. The precipitate was formed when the iron and the hydroxide ions got together and they stuck together so strongly that water could not pull them apart again. So finally we'll put a box around our final version of our net ionic equation for this reaction. Fe3+, giving the charge of the ion, it was in the dissolved state. OH-, minus hydroxide ion, in the dissolved state, produced FeOH3. We write S after this in parentheses, indicating that these two ions 
clump together, forming that solid precipitate. And the final thing we need to do is to add the coefficient. So we're balancing the number of not only particles, but we're also balancing charges. Plus 3, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 gives us negative 3. We have 1 iron, 1 iron. We have 3 O's, 3 oxygens, 3 oxygens, 3 hydrogens, and 3 hydrogens here. So that's been a brief look at the topic of what happens in a double replacement reaction which produces a precipitate and how you can write a net ionic equation. Thanks for watching everyone.